Welcome back to Farm Show TV. On today's episode, we are discussing aerial application on the farm. Joining me today, I have two guests from the Canadian Aerial Applicators Association, the President, Chad Vanderbile, and Executive Director, Shara Tardif. Thank you both so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for the invite. So let's start off giving our viewers an overview of the aerial application industry. Share with me some of your members and, and the mandate of your association. Sure. Well, our association was started in 1989 um, and it started from the provincial associations recognizing a few years prior that a national association was needed to speak to the different government agencies that govern our, our industry. Um, so today we still, we have about 89 operator members plus our pilot members and our affiliate members. Um, mandate is still the same as when the association first started to promote education and safety within the industry in Canada. So aerial application or crop dusting as we used to refer to it is not new in the prairies, it's not new in Canada. Give us a bit of a historical overview of the industry. Yeah, well, the very first test pilot of what we would call crop dusting was 100 years ago. So it was on August 3rd in 1921 um, in Ohio. And that's sort of where the term crop dusting came from is they actually dusted the crop. Uh, and so now we've, we've sort of come a long way and most of what is applied now is just a, a water-based crop care product. Um, and of course, we've made huge innovations leaps and bounds with the aircraft. Yeah, I, and I want to come back to all of the innovations. Before we do that, I want to look at some of the history, kind of where we've come in the industry. And I had a great conversation with my dad on the way into the city today and telling him I was speaking about aerial application. And I have such great memories of being a kid on the farm. Both my parents had their pilot's license. I remember my dad spraying our fields. I had a grandpa that was a sprayer. Uh, my uncle had his pilot's license. A lot of farmers in the area were spraying their own fields. And he was reflecting on that and told me that originally he had his pilot's license, so that was all he needed to be able to spray his own fields. And so you know, we talked about how there was not even any GPS at the time. So I'm gonna open it up to you folks and tell me about some of the innovations that we've experienced in this industry since my dad was crop was um, spraying our fields. Yeah, so for flying farmers, it's not the old back in the day where you just had a small Cessna egg truck and would do your own fields. Um, with agriculture growing, so the airplanes. Uh, the airplanes are getting faster, more sophisticated, and everybody's realizing that even time is an issue. Uh, lots, of, lots of guys don't have time to spend in the airplane in the summer anymore either. So even with the big airplanes, they're hiring pilots now. And just the amount of cost for the airplanes nowadays as well and the upkeep, it's hard to continually spray your own, own fields only. You almost need to go out and get extra work to be able to pay for, for what the airplanes cost and maintenance costs there are nowadays. On, on the policy side, there's a lot of farmers that are advocating for changes to be made to product labels because they're oftentimes exactly the same product is labeled differently in Canada than it is in the US. You know, I have a lot of farming friends in the US. We have a lot of similar practices when it comes to agronomy. Not a lot of change in the geography even of the, of the crops that we grow. Rotation-wise, it's the same, but the labels will be different. Is that similar in aerial applicating industry? Yes, so in Canada we're required to have 5.2 gallons uh, for spraying. The U.S. equivalent product would be two. So you put that into economies of scale and the cost, our cost, um, significantly higher. The wa water required for spraying significantly higher. Um, the registrants are aware of the difference and we have a great relationship with our big registrants. Uh, here in Canada, so we are actively working with registrants to see about having that label changed. It is a very big moving wheel, it's not something that's going to be moved overnight. Um, and then it's a very costly moving wheel for our registrants. Canada is a small market, we're a mighty market, but we're a small market. And so the cost for a registrant to come in and make a label change, they're not just making one label change to change all their labels, they have to apply to PMRA to make label changes for all of their labels. So we are actively working, but we do recognize um, that it's going to take some time and we're, we're hoping we can get that change um, just so we can be more competitive with our U.S. counterparts. Yeah, and, and as a farmer who pays for aerial application, I'll, I will thank you for, for addressing that issue. Not only is it more, is it more costly, 
when you add more water volume, and there's probably a lot of consumers that may be watching this show too, it's not just about the added cost, there's also the, the water volume itself. So there's environmental concerns about using more water. So if a farmer across the U.S. border gets to or is allowed to use less water, we're also talking about less passes over the field, less fuel in general with their cost of the bill, it would be substantial. And, and PMRA, you know, um, really looks at the efficacy. So that's what we're working on is the efficacy data to show the efficacy is still there if we're spraying at 5.2 or if we're spraying at 2. Yeah, well, keep, keep working at it. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's way, if there, I'm sure there's ways that farmers and your association can work together because I think there's some benefits to both of us on, on that regulation piece. So Chad, there are different application methods available in aerial application. You've got aircrafts that we're used to seeing, there's helicopters, there's drones, there's all kinds of innovation. Can you share with us those different application methods and are there different environmental conditions that make one more appropriate than the other? Yeah, so mostly everybody sees there are probably airplanes flying around spraying. Um, airplanes are the fastest and they get the most acres covered when it's like a timely matter. Um, helicopters work great in remote locations. They work great everywhere, um, but they're definitely good in remote locations where an airstrip is, say, 40, 50 miles away and it's just too far to take an airplane back and forth to the, to the field every time or too costly in fuel to take an airplane back and forth every time. And the helicopter is also a little slower, so they can get into more sensitive areas a little bit better and they work a little better around if you, know, if you have a field with lots of trees and lots of power lines or something like that, they're maybe a little safer to take in to a field like that versus an airplane. Um, but you know, our airplanes and helicopters, they have to be calibrated every 18 months and the patterns and you know, effective swath widths and stuff like that are all regulated and in the end they're both you know, equally as good tool just depending on where you want to go with it. Um, drones are coming down the pipeline right now. There's nothing currently registered for drones as a crop protection product right now, but I know they did some work last year and they're continuing to do a lot more trials again this year. We'll see where drones go from there. Oh, Chad, you mentioned drones. I see lots of videos and I get lots of questions. People get super excited when it comes to drone technology. I'm, I'm less excited. I don't see it as a value at the moment in, on large scale farming operations that we see here in Western Canada. But talk to me a little bit about the excitement around drones. You know, drones are um, a great exciting technology that's coming up. They're not approved yet to fly or to spray crop care products in Canada. They are approved to fly. Uh, we do see them coming. They're coming in the future. What it looks like in the aerial application, we don't necessarily know yet, but they're definitely going to be a great tool in the toolbox. Um, they can help maybe spray in those areas where the aircraft or the helicopter cannot get. Um, they can do other things right now. They can seed. They, they have some other uses for agriculture, but they are not currently. PMRA is taking the stance on drones that they have to have their own label, so not fall under the aerial application label, but they'll be their own label. So that is sort of um, that's the, what's holding uh, spraying by drones in Canada. It sounds like that would the make back. the most sense for the whole industry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as, aside from j drones, then Chad. Tell us about some of the innovation on the aircraft side of it. Yeah, so like the airplanes have come a long ways, even even in the last 15, 20 years, you know, you used to have the flaggers on the side or people stand holding the flags in the field. Now we've gone from just, you know, GPS following the light bar to moving maps in the cockpits with full flow controls, so, you know, precise application all the time. Um, there's pulse width modulation nozzle, nozzles coming down the pipeline as well that have started and weather stations that are being fitted to airplanes to you know, work in conjunction with the pulse width nozzles to you know, really try and get the best application possible. Um, there's always new nozzle technologies being worked on and, and I think it's important to know that you know, this is an evolving, evolving industry and we've been working really hard. We actually just did a presentation at the U of S this year and we're hoping to continue to do more. You know, U of S is a great university and Saskatchewan with the amount of farmland, we're hoping to maybe partner with U of S a little bit and be able to do some studies of our own in Saskatchewan and, and be maybe possibly a, a leader in education and technology in Saskatchewan. So there, there will be 
you know, consumers watching the show, farmers watching the show, is there a message that you would like to leave to farmers who are your partners and collaborators in caring for the plants and consumers that have concerns, I'm sure, about application of the products that we use and what it means to them in their food supply? Yeah, you know, so for farmers, our, our, our whole goal is to be out there and help the farmer. You know, we want to be there for the farmer, we want to help the farmer and, and make their bottom line better. Um, save them on wheel tracks, save them on, you know, e equipment costs or labor costs, which is continually growing every year. And for the consumer, you know, we are heavily regulated and we want to do it and be as safe as we can. Um, you know, we're hired to do our job. We're not trying to buzz a farm to wake somebody up at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> or, you know, drift in onto somebody's yard or, you know, lots of times if you see some smoke or something coming out of the airplane, it's just smoke. We're testing to see which way the wind is going to go. And, you know, we're not, we're not there to be the bad guy. We're just there to do our job and to help the farmer the best we can and, and get the safest and the best quality food for, for the consumers. Well, without the crop care protection product, if that crop were to die, I mean, we've seen it globally. The cost of food is just going up and up. And so aerial application is there to help with production of providing safe, and abundant food supply. And it's, that's just not, re, not attainable without aerial application. Great. You can watch this episode and all others on our website, Canada's Farm Show Regina SK.com anytime, anywhere. I'll see you there. We know farming isn't an eight to five business. That's why we want to give you the tools to do business anywhere, anytime. With MyViterra, you have a powerful tool at your fingertips to stay connected no matter where you are. Create online contracts, receive customized alerts, view your account information, and access grain prices in real time. Talk to your rep today and find out more about how you can harness the power of MyViterra, keeping you connected in real time. This is MyViterra.